Hello there. My name is Joe Niehaus, and this is Yapper's Delight. So just for a quick background on myself, I am currently a commerce writer. So I write for publishers like Business Insider, Travel and Leisure, Men's Health, and a lot of niche blogs. So websites that review brands and products and do roundups, similar to, to the bigger sites that I, I just mentioned. I got into, just for a little bit of background into myself, so I got into this commerce writing and affiliate marketing business by accident. In college, it was junior year, I really wanted to get into venture capital and investment banking. And so I started, I reached out to a bunch of venture capitalists from Sequoia Capital, Lightspeed Venture Partners, et cetera. And someone along the way told me that it was a good idea to start writing my thoughts online. So in 2020, I started writing on medium.com once a week, about 500 word articles around something that was going on that week. So it could have been earnings reports or different direct consumer brands or even some tech startups all within the e-commerce kind of consumer landscape. And then from there, I got my first paid gig, kind of by accident again, at the Quality Edit, which had just started in, I think it was June of 2020, and I started writing in December of 2020, and was one of the first writers at that outlet. And then, you know, about a year goes by, and I get a job, my first, you know, real job in e-commerce, at an affiliate marketing agency. And we had some great brands that we were, great e-commerce brands doing 50, 100, 150, 200, 350 million. And so it was kind of interesting because I saw the aspect from the brand side, which is what I was doing all the time. But I came from the affiliate side via the quality edit and the publishers that I, that I wrote for. And I got to see, one, a lot of smaller brands who were interested in affiliate marketing as a whole. So this was in 2023, which I would say is kind of the, a big influx into affiliate marketing, kind of straying away from just PR, was 2023, which was a, a very big year for a lot of brands and affiliates. And then from that, I got to also see how the biggest brands were running their affiliate programs and how they thought about things. So I say this for a few reasons is, first, I am not an expert in affiliate marketing or e-commerce as a whole. I've never started a brand. I've not really ran any campaign ad campaigns and I don't own a blog. So take everything that I, I say with a grain of salt, but all that being said, I have touched a lot of different parts of the ecosystem and have gotten to see how this kind of plays out in the real world. So a few weeks ago, I bought this camera and wanted to not necessarily start a podcast, but just kind of put my thoughts out there. One, just for myself, because it's fun and creative. And then the second reason is also just to be able to look back on some of the predictions or just thoughts I had like I do with my Medium blog today, I wrote a story. It was published on February 3rd, 2020, which is my birthday. It was my 21st birthday. And the story was published that day called Why Target is Turning Itself into Glossier. And it was all about how Target's private label business was pretty and had some of that direct-to-consumer branding, the you know red antler gin lane type. And it's very fun to look back on now because it's... I wouldn't say it was foreshadowing the future because, you know, it was already happening, but a lot of the things there have become true across the, across the board. Kroger, Target, Walmart have all created these very pretty brands that are private label and they look like they could be a direct consumer brand. And so that's just one example of why I think it's super exciting and interesting to kind of record your thoughts and look back on them in a few years, a few months, a few weeks few decades maybe. And so I think video is just an awesome format for that. So I'd say 
over anything else, this is for me, and it's very fun. And we'll be having guests on people you probably haven't heard of, which I think is a good thing. This isn't, you know, My First Million or Lex Friedman or any of these other podcasts. It's not meant to be. It's just honestly meant to, ha- to be a place for, for myself where I can put my thoughts into the, into the world. And if other people find them interesting, great. If not, also great. So the, the title of this is How to Do Affiliate Marketing for E-commerce Brands. So what is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing simply means word of mouth. It is hearing about a product or service that's from someone other than the company that creates it. So, you know, you can also call it referral marketing or, I mean, even influencer, partnership marketing. These are all kind of terms for affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing, word of mouth, partnership marketing, all similar things. If you have an e-commerce brand or any really <laughs> any company for that matter, you are already doing affiliate marketing. I can guarantee it. So if you have an e-commerce brand, chances are that you have influencers that either talk about your product unprovoked or, or that you contracted to talk about it. That's affiliate marketing. Now, it may be positioned as something else or titled something else, but it's affiliate marketing. If you have a fried chicken restaurant and you are on a college campus and students talk about your restaurant, affiliate marketing. Now, I don't know if technically someone needs to get paid in order to be considered an affiliate, but the point being is that forget all the fancy lingo or experts trying to sell you on this crazy thing of what affiliate marketing is. The fact of the matter is that affiliate marketing simply means someone else talking about your brand and your product. It's simple. It's easy to do. You don't need a million teams, um, you know, an agency, a bunch of software. You can do it with everything that you have currently. And there's still a place for those things, very much so. And the bigger you get, the more support you need. But you're probably already doing it and you can continue to do it. And maybe you recognize that you're doing it or or maybe you don't. So let me just define a a few more terms. So one is the brand. So the brand, the company, the product, the service, that's the subject of affiliate marketing as a whole. And then you have the affiliate. So we'll get into this in a little bit, but there are plenty of different affiliates and you can call affiliates partners, influencers, creators, any number of things. But there's the affiliate is the person who is driving sales on your behalf. So brand, affiliate, and then kind of the grease, the oil that makes everything go is commissions. So you can have flat fee commissions or CPAs, cost per acquisition, CPLs, cost per lead. Um, You can have rev share or just percentage commissions. Or yeah, sometimes the CPAs are called bounties. But the point being is that all of these things, which we'll just call as an umbrella term commissions, All of them are the exchange, the reward that the affiliate gets for promoting the brand. So brand, affiliate, commission. Now the types of affiliates. So there can be, I think this is the biggest confusion in the industry today is like what constitutes as an affiliate. Because, you know, I see there's different, whether it's, platform founders, tech startup founders, or agencies or brands, whoever it may be, they all seem to have a different opinion of what an affiliate is. And perhaps it's a bias, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, or they just call it something else. But the fact of the matter is anyone can really be an affiliate. And anyone, a lot lot of people are affiliates. So influencers, affiliates, 
blogs and content, affiliates. Newsletter, affiliate. YouTubers, affiliates. Paid media buyers, affiliates. There's so much, so many different types of affiliates and there's not one platform that you know dominates them all or one brand that's best for one type or you know all these different things. It's, it's, very, it's a very broad term. In addition to that, in addition to that, an affiliate can also be called, you know, a traffic aggregator or an attention seeker. Anyone who is getting attention can become an affiliate for someone else or for another brand, I should say. So affiliate, attention, audience, these are all kind of the same things. Anyone who can garner an audience can be considered an affiliate, in my opinion. So let's talk about the different types of affiliate marketing. So there's paid ads, which I don't know if it's necessarily the original form. I, I tend to think that it is. And paid media, paid ad affiliate marketing is, you'll see platforms like ClickBank or Max Bounty or GiddyUp, all of these platforms where people who are very skilled in buying ads can find a product on a you know online website database and they can run ads on behalf of that brand or product to get sales and then they will get a percentage of that of that sale and they'll profit on their their commission and how much it costs them to run those ads so that's paid ads and these types of people were you know you also often think of like clickbank and that's like supplements and things that are potentially a little more black hat or less brandy. So that's paid ads, and these, this has been around honestly since the early 2000s when all of this internet ecosystem really kind of came to fruition. And especially with you know, different types of ad networks like native advertising and Facebook ads to a different extent, kind of once those really popped up maybe in 2012, 2013, and paid, paid marketing affiliates, media buyers, are some of the best media buyers in the world because they realize that they can make the most money by running these offers, campaigns, on behalf of other brands. And they're spending their own money. They're risking their own money to do that. So the second type, and these are in no particular order, will say, are influencers or creators. So influencers are people who are posting organic content and you'll see this you know, for any brand on TikTok, Instagram, even Twitter. And influencers get their traffic via growing an organic following. So basically for free, although it takes their time and they're just posting about products and then with like TikTok shop, to a lesser extent, Instagram, you can have, you know, in-platform shopping. TikTok shop is probably, I think, this year's biggest shiny object. And I don't know much about it, but it seems like it's doing really well for a lot of people and brands. So that's kind of TikTok shop. And then Instagram, that could be something like link in bio or, you know, here's a sparkling water. Get a case with free shipping for $1 and go to my bio and then, you know, it'll be sparklingwater.com slash creator's name. Influencers, pretty self-explanatory. Now let's go to content. And I'll put blogs, mass media publications, whatever you want to call it. So that's the, I think the best example of this and most well known is Wirecutter. Wirecutter is owned by the New York Times. They got it bought out in 2016 by one of, I believe one of the founders of founders of Gizmodo, or at least someone who was very involved with that. And so these are people who traditionally, historically, have gotten traffic via search engine optimization. So they have blogs. These are, can be called like mommy bloggers or even, yeah, like niche sites, niche affiliate sites, affiliate blogs. And so I'll say, I'll kind of bucket the content affiliates into written long form content creators. So. Wirecutter, 
Travel and Leisure, Business Insider, all of these have long form written content and get traffic via Google or Bing or DuckDuckGo. And the way that that kind of funnel works is it depends on what type of content it is, but a lot of times it'll be lower funnel content. So say you wanna buy a Hydro Flask, you're gonna look up a Hydro Flask review and then you're gonna to go to switchbacktravel.com and which is an outdoor blog and then they'll have a review on Hydro Flask. You click on that link and then that blog gets credited with the sale and then they get a commission. And so the not the problem, but the nuance about content affiliates is that oftentimes it's not the most top of funnel traffic. It's typically bottom of funnel where the consumer or the potential customer, I should say, just needs a little third party validation to get over the hump. And so that's why they, they go to these blogs and then the blog gets credited as they should with referring a customer. But in order for that to happen, people need to know about what the brand is. And so we'll get into this in a second, but your marketing efforts will kind of feed into that. And then maybe not as talked about, but still the same thing is first YouTubers and then second newsletters. So YouTubers, obviously, if, you, if you've ever searched up like e-commerce videos, you'll see a lot of YouTubers that are promoting Shopify. So Shopify has an affiliate program. Uh, Squarespace had a lot of this. And then newsletters, same thing. It just depends on what the newsletter is, but still, again, they have traffic, they deliver content, and they get, they get sales. So the thing with all of this is, I think historically, people have kind of looked at these as different, different kind of entities. So you have an influencer, you have a creator, you have an affiliate blog, you have a mass media publication, you have a YouTuber, you have a newsletter. But the, the fact of the matter is that all of these are pretty much the same. Again, they all have attention and they're all trying to convert sales. Aside from paid media buyers, who paid media buyers could be nameless people in Kazakhstan and they could be promoting an American product. But everyone else, it's like they're pretty much the same. They're producing some type of organic content and they're getting views and eyeballs and clicks and then they're converting sales in the way that they, they know how to do. And so with, we won't get into this too much right now, but with all these content, especially the mass media publications, is since they are reliant on Google, in the past six months, Google's traffic has, well, not Google's traffic, but Google niche blogs have not gotten as much traffic as Reddit, Cura, and some of these bigger mass media publications. And so the content blogs are trying to get into YouTube or get into newsletters or Instagram. So they're becoming creators and influencers on these other platforms. And then maybe to a lesser extent, creators are creating their own, on, own blogs, but it's all kind of meshing into one, one persona. And on the paid media side, you'll even see, if you Google best workout shirts today, you'll see Men's Health or perhaps another publisher promoting their article in Google ad search results. So it's, it's, you know, it's not good or bad or anything. It's just, it is what it is. Everyone's becoming the same type of affiliate because they have to. And so what is the differentiator? Yeah, you can play by algorithm rules and you need to. So that's SEO, what's popping on Instagram or YouTube, TikTok, etc. But at the end of the day, as Mr. Beast would say, like good content wins. Good content is good content. So all of these different people, these affiliates, what they're trying to do is create the best content. So is AI going to do that? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. No one, or, or I shouldn't say no one, but I have not seen any blogs really lean into AI, AI too much. And I hope that's not the case because that's my, that's my job. And, you know, all of these different people are just trying to create the best content. So those are the types of affiliate marketing. We'll call it media buyer, influencer, and content, which all those things can kind of be mixed and matched and use some of the same things. So now let's get into how to start affiliate marketing as a brand. So 
on any given week, I probably interact with maybe 100 different e-commerce brands. I don't know. I see 200, have conversations with 50, I don't know, somewhere in that. In one way, shape, or form, I see a lot of brands. Some I have more in-depth conversations with, and some are, I just see their name. But if there is one takeaway that you need to have on how to get into affiliate marketing, and as we discussed, you probably already are in affiliate marketing, but is you need to have a good product. So you hear, whether it's in tech or, or e-commerce, you hear all these people talk about like having a good product is the only thing that matters and you know all these different things. But I don't think it's I don't think it's as grain drilled into si- inside people's heads as it needs to be. So a good product, a good product. So it's kind of a two-part equation. On one hand, product doesn't matter and brand is the only thing that matters because anyone can go onto Alibaba or find a co-packer or a private label or anything. Anyone can find the same product and so the hard work is creating a brand. That's true. And then on the flip side is, it's almost like brand doesn't matter because brand and marketing doesn't matter. Only having a good product matters because anyone can run ads. Anyone can get a, you know, a decent website, Shopify store set up. So the only thing that matters is having like an innovative product or like Hydro Flask with a lifetime warranty. So that's the only thing that matters and the brand kind of comes separate. So I'm not really you know, interested in that debate. I think there's merits to both sides. But the point with having a good product and why that's everything in e-commerce and in, in life, services, business, or whatever, is that specifically talking with affiliate marketing, good products allow you to do, I have it bucketed into three things right here, but generally speaking, a good product is the biggest thing for affiliate marketing for three reasons. And I'll get into each of these, but one is you can charge more money. Two is that good products are easier to recommend. And then three, your conversion rate will be higher if you have a good product. So I just said three things that are are meaningless. I said three things that all mean the same thing. They all just mean having a good good product. But again, I don't think people talk about it enough. So let's go on the first one. So you can charge more. So if you have a good product, that means you can charge more. Hydro Awala can pay for can charge someone $45 for a water bottle because the product is good. The the off brand on Alibaba can't charge as much because there's not as much trust and the product could be decent but they don't have the brand. And so, you know, it's like if it's a good if it's a decent product, you can charge, but not like enough because the brand isn't there. And all that. But if you have a good product, your brand value goes up and then you can charge more. And, and so it's like the same reason why, you know, Hermes can charge X amount per bag while the other brand at Bloomingdale's can charge, you know, similar, but not as much because they don't, they don't have the perceived value that the good product of Hermes has. And so I know that's kind of partially brand, but if your product is good, you can charge more in short, and that plays out in every area of our lives. And so that gives you a higher margin, so you can charge more and have a higher margin, and then you can pay affiliates more because you have the higher margin, because you can charge more, because your product is better. So going on to point two, so one, you can charge more. Two, it's easier to recommend. So if you have a friend or say your mom and you're going to tell her about a pair of running shoes, are you, are you going to tell her about them if, if they're bad? No. So having a good product makes it easier for people to recommend. So if you take this in you know, a real world example is that a creator doesn't want to wear down their audience with bad products. Some do, maybe. But it's easier to recommend something that people like 
and actually think is a good product because they want to you know, maintain the same level of respect with their clients and the trust, X, Y, Z. So it's easier to recommend if you have a good product, which helps you get more publicity. It helps you get excited, affiliates get more excited. So you can charge more if your product's good. It's easier to recommend if your product's good. And then three is your conversion rate goes up. So if you have a good product, then that's gonna feed into your reviews and just overall word of mouth. And so you're gonna sell more products because more people trust you, more people know about you, more people have seen you because your product's good, so people are using it. So your conversion rate is all going to, is going to go up. Charge more, easier to recommend, and conversion rate goes up. That's all, those are all byproducts of having a good product. So I saw this tweet recently where someone said like, I'm writing, I'm writing a story and I'm curious like what the first thing someone should know about starting affiliate marketing is. And I replied, having a good product. And that's why I said, other people got really technical. They said, you know, X, Y, Z, uh, use this platform, use this software, use this strategy, blah, blah, blah. But without a good product, it's it's just like any other marketing. What What is it? Like bad marketing can't fix a good product. Good products can't be hurt by bad marketing. I don't know, something like that. But you can have the most, the hottest audience or the largest following and still not sell anything if the product isn't good. And I know I'm not saying anything revolutionary here, but I feel like it just needs to be said more. So let, let me just give an example of how this plays out in real life. So I'm trying to see if I, so I get, I get sent a lot of products and the products that get, that I write about the most are the ones that I've like felt and touched and really really gotten to to hold and that's because i know that they're a good product and because i care about my reputation with the publisher i only want to be writing about the best products so i take a product and i write about it in a roundup for a publisher because i want the publisher to be recognized as you know, having a high reputation and I want to have a high reputation with the publisher so I can write for more for them. So if I get a product and it's just not very good, then I'm not going to write about it because again, I care about my reputation. So th I mean, that's, that's about as simple as it gets is you need to have a good product in order to do that. So I mean, go, so that's kind of like how to do a, affiliate marketing. Like step one is like having a good product. And I feel like I've kind of beaten the the dead dog on why having a good product is essential. But I'm just gonna list out maybe, I'm gonna come off the top of the dome and, and list out you know three ways that you can start affiliate marketing today as an e-commerce brand, maybe doing 1 million, 10 million, 20 million, doesn't really matter. Here are three ways that you can start affiliate marketing right now. I'm gonna break it up by content, which is what I know best, influencer, and then YouTube. And you'll see, these are all gonna be the same things. So first you're gonna get set up on any platform that you already use. So, I don't know, Impact, Share Sale, CJ, Social Snowball, whatever it may be. So let's go for content. So. How it works is there's a lot of editors or owners of these blogs and they're looking to make money. So they want products that convert well. So they need to know about your product and they need to touch it. So if I were a brand owner and wanted to get into content, affiliate marketing, wanted to get more reviews, et cetera, the first thing that I would do is look up all my competitors. So let's just say it's golf, you sell a new golf club. So I'd look up TaylorMade, Strixon, Callaway, I don't even know all the golf brands, but I would look these all up and then I would type in review, roundup, guide, how to, whatever it is. And so I would just find the first hundred blogs that have written about anything having to do with golf clubs. And then I'd find out either the editor at that website or the owner of the, of the site. And I would send them an email and just say, you know, first name at website.com. 
Hey Tim, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm the founder of this brand. We are just starting to get into affiliate marketing and would love to send you products. No, no strings attached or anything, but happy to answer any questions. Could I get your address and, and send you something out? And then I'd rinse and repeat a hundred times. 10 people will be thrilled to get products. Eh, probably 50 people out of 100 will be thrilled to get products. 30 will say they'll do a review and then maybe 15 will do a review in like three months. It takes a while. So that's generally the, with gain starting the content. You're not gonna get into GQ you know, right away. Maybe you will, but that's kind of like step one is just reaching out to these people and just getting product in their hands. Affiliate marketing can be extremely powerful, but it also takes a lot it takes a lot of time because you're dealing with people, you're dealing with content, all these different things. So you just want to get your hands, your product into the as many hands as possible. So influencer, same thing. Influencers need to know about you. They need to know you have a good product. So I would find, say you're a supplement brand, I would find all the different weightlifters and you know, whoever hits that target demo, so 25 to 35 year old guys who are trying to get you know, bulk and go to Instagram and find every, every influencer on Instagram who targets that and say, hey, can I send you product? No strings attached, whatever. And then just keep the dialogue open, just serve them. Because if you think about it, by serving that one person, you're serving 100 potential customers. So the care that you give that influencer is gonna be the care that your customers are gonna expect and are gonna to want to get. So if you are treating an influencer with a lot of respect and get, answering all their questions and whatever, they're gonna be more likely to re recommend you to the customers and then all you need to do is give the same level of service and bam, you got 100 customers. I personally think it's a great idea to just you know, spoil these influencers with whatever they want, as much product, send it to their mom, who cares? Like the influencer is the affiliate, is the one who who has the leverage. And then let's just go YouTuber. So same thing is you're gonna reach out to these people and get their email, get their contact, send them product, and not even ask for, I wouldn't say you even ask for them to, to do anything with it. You just are there and gain the product in their hand. So, Let's just call that the crash course on how to do affiliate marketing. Basically, all that we did there is just get your product into the hands of more people. Don't worry about, you know, how, if there's gonna be content, how the content's gonna be, going to be, come out. The fact that, the, like, the point with all this is you're just trying to create momentum because momentum, so you're just trying to create momentum, trying to get some buzz going, and then slowly but surely, because you have a good product, it's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually a celebrity will pick it up and then you know, more people will hear about it, then you'll get some boosts with you know, a newspaper article. And, but it all came down to just more people getting your product. So that's you know, my crash course. Again, don't, don't take my word for it, to try what you want. But this is an essentially free way other than your time and then the cost of goods for the products. This is essentially the free way to get started with affiliate marketing. And this is what agencies do. This is what platforms, you know, theoretically help you do faster. But I think it's really simple. It's just affiliate marketing is word of mouth marketing. So how can I get people to talk about my product? You can get people to talk about your product by getting it into their hands. And then, so that means what you need to do is get it into as many hands as possible to start creating that momentum. So, hope you enjoyed that. And I hope to talk more about this kind of stuff.